Hello, folks. Here I am. Have a, a very uh, fortunate uh, celebrity sighting here, Mr. Curtis Stone. He was part of the Cater Source Conference, uh, speaker, obviously, and we're so grateful to have you. So, Curtis, Thanks, how are you doing? Buddy. Absolutely. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, so, one of the questions I would ask off the bat is like, how has this Cater Source experience been for you? So far, it's been amazing. You know, we, we, we're cooking for 800 people tonight, so it, you're always a little nerve-wracking. Yeah. Um, you know, that little nervousness, you know, you get when you do a big event like this because trying to coordinate 800 plates of food coming out hot within like a 15, 20-minute window, um, it's, it's a real challenge, you know, because you still want the food to be amazing, you want it to taste fantastic and all these different uh, textures and, and, and things like that going on with the food. So um, it's, it's fun and exciting. Uh, but what I've enjoyed so much already is, is meeting so many other people from the same industry, different parts of the country. We all have shared experiences, but they're, they're, they're also quite different. So it's nice to hear um, a network work and meet new people and, and sort of hear their stories and um, I'm also sort of looking to the trade show element of it where um, we get in and get to look at all the best equipment that's really specialized for uh, for our industry in, in the events business so um, yes it's great so that's exciting and I and correct me if I'm wrong Curtis like you just kind of got started in the catering space because obviously you've been busy with your media tour and your food business I mean restaurants and your TV experiences uh, appearances so tell me about that so we started an, an events business a year and a half ago officially, um, but I guess the truth is we were doing events for a lot longer um, before that. I, I stopped cooking in restaurants for a period of four or five years and I did a bunch of events um, during that time. So I've got a lot of experience with it, but you know, setting up a company and scaling it so you can do um, dinners as big or small as you know eight to eight hundred is um, uh, is exciting you know but it takes a lot of work and a lot of careful planning and um, that's sort of what we've been doing for the last couple of years which has been fun I'm assuming like people are just wanting to book you all the time because you're Curtis Stone so talk to me about like like the sh um, you know the exposure of the brand and how that's been helping you and your business look I think it's it's a nice thing to bring people's attention to you, whether it's a restaurant or an events business or whatever it is. But the truth is, if your product's no good, people won't come back. Okay. You know, and I learned that very quickly with restaurants where I saw other um, great chefs have restaurants that did really well, and then you'd see a celebrity chef open a restaurant. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. The truth is, it depends if it's any good, you know, and I always sort of knew that instinctively. So when I opened restaurants, I, I knew that I had to make a, um, a great, job of it you know a great go of it and um, same with the events business you know you're only as good as the last meal you served um, and it's really up to us to do a great job so that's what we try to do oh that's great i mean i actually talked to chef eric levine earlier and he said the same thing like yes it's great to be kind of known you have a cookbook or whatever but if your food sucks like you know like you said there's no more repeat customers so so tell me about your events about the fire and all that i mean i i saw the pictures which i will kind of link up it's sure. beautiful stuff so talk to me about those events so we do a lot of live fire cooking we um we roast whole animals on crosses asador style which is an argentinian style of cooking i think aussies really pride themselves on their barbecuing skills yeah, it's yeah. slow cooking put and, the and shrimp on the barber exactly that's from dumb and dumber sorry <laughs> <laughs> um and so you know look i think there's uh there's lots of ways to cook on fire and that's something that we do really well we also have a butcher shop so we have access to incredible meats and and you know game and things from different parts of the world so um yeah that's certainly a cornerstone of our events business how the heck did you think about like i want to my events is going to be cooking all the meats like the whole thing how did that come up and like how did you execute on that look i think at an event you want of course delicious food but you also maybe want a little theater you know okay. something to sort of be a little entertaining and um, i think the cooking process has become more and more interesting to people um, and cooking over a fire you know even if you have a barbecue at home you invite people around and you grill yeah. you know people come and stand around that grill and there's something really nice it's almost something primal about it right. um, and i love it it's the same as having an open fire everyone sits there and stares at the fire because it's so beautiful and there's something about that you know so um, i think connecting Connecting those two things together, the live fires with with different methods of cooking where people can watch and be like, oh wow, I had no idea you could do that. Um, I think that's a pretty nice way to do it and um, and delicious as well. And I think it's also an intimate thing too, like you know, like it's kind of, you want to kind of be together in a way, if that that's makes true. sense. Yes. So, 
Um, one of the questions I would ask is like, you know, you're a busy guy. I mean, you have kids, you have a wife, and like, like, how do you do it? Like, from the TV shows, the restaurants, and now the event space. Like, seriously, how do you do it? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I haven't figured out is my work-life balance. I work too much, yeah. um, and I, the truth is, I want to be home with my kids more often. Um, but that's that's a part of being a restaurateur and a business owner. You, you know, you sort of you, you 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 have to go for it. You've got to put it, put everything into it. I think the truth is, I love it, and when when you love something, it keeps you coming back to it. And um, I love my family too, of course, and I love being home with them. Of but course. you know, it's a give and take. And uh, at the moment, I've been working really hard, and uh, one day it'll change. But for now, that's what I'm um, well, that's what I'm doing. So, I mean, when you say you're working hard, obviously, but like, you know, you can't be in so many places in one time. Is like, do you have a pretty big team management of, uh, kind of expand on that a little bit? Oh, we've got a great team. I think the most important thing of any business is its culture. And, okay. you know, that culture comes from its people. They're, they're your biggest resource. They're the, your most important um, asset. And I'm really proud of our team. They work really, really hard. They drive each other. They help each other. Um, they care about each other. And I think that's really important. It's a family business. My brother moved his family over from um, Australia to LA. And wow. we got involved in that's the restaurants deal. with us. Yeah. Um, and, and then that turned into an events company. And and um, we treat all our staff like family. Like family. Yeah. Okay, and you know, what do you see as the future in food? Like in terms of like, there's all these DoorDash, Uber Eats, and like, that's one aspect of food. And there's obviously the catering aspect. What's your take about the food delivery? concept like I'm assuming in your restaurant do you do food delivery we don't know um, we're more a fine dining restaurant but I, a lot of restaurants are I'd say the lion's share of restaurants these days are doing food delivery and I think that's the way the market's moving we want convenience we want things simple we want things quickly um, and it's not going to go anywhere you know that's going to be the case for some time and, and that's okay you know I don't have a problem with it I think that it creates a lot of opportunity for people um, I think if you think about a home-cooked meal it's going to become more rare you know which in a way is sad but I also you know as someone that works in the hotel restaurant catering industry um, that's what I've always done. I've always been that person that creates that for someone else anyway. So if anything, it makes our industry even stronger. Um, you know, I, th I think that there's a lot to gain from a home cooked meal. So I encourage everyone to cook for their families. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that meal deliveries are here and they're, they're going to get bigger and stronger. And um, sup I think we'll see supermarkets really morph into something different um, as well because of that. So, you know, we won't see as many people going and buying their proteins and fruits and vegetables from a grocery store because they won't be cooking at home as much. So, um, yeah, that's all going to change. Do you think people are just being lazy or people that just trust people cooking better food and they'll do a good job? Look, I think, you know, it all it depends on where you put your allocation of time, right? And that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, you have 24 hours in a day. You spend eight of those hours of sleep. You should probably spend eight or 10 or 12 or who knows how many hours at work. There's not a lot of hours left. You know, you might be left with eight four five six hours you know personal time so how you want to spend that with your family is up to you you know maybe you want to spend it cooking and eating and hanging out maybe you want to spend it watching television and eating something out of a box you know like it's and sometimes you want to do both you know you want to do that on a monday and that something else on a tuesday so um you know i don't think though that it's laziness necessarily because i think we all work really hard um but i think that you know, we should probably all stop for a minute and look at where we allocate our time. Personally, I love cooking for my family. I even like growing the food that I feed my family. And we um, we spend time in the garden together and in the kitchen and around the dinner table. And I actually think that time is probably more special than the time we spend watching television together or, um, you, you know, doing something different. So, uh, but don't get me wrong, I've got two kids. One's a basketball trainer, the other one's, <laughs> you know, like there's always, there's always there's a, a bunch of moving on, parts, yeah. yeah. What's in the pipeline with your catering event uh, business and um, this year and what's your overall big picture plan for that? 
So we're doing a couple of events a week right now, um, and they range from small to sort of mid-sized, I guess. You know, we're doing anything from uh, little events in people's homes for 20 or 30 people, and we're doing stuff for a couple of hundred as well. And then we do the odd one, like tonight, we're cooking for 800 people, so we're doing some that are, are much bigger. Um, but they're sort of fewer and, you know, on per, by design, to be honest with you, we'd rather sort of focus on 100, 200 people is sort of our sweet spot for right now and we want to grow the company we want to be doing um, maybe double the amount of amount of events that we're doing now within 12 months but we want that gradual growth we don't want to grow all of a sudden and and not be able to manage it we want to sort of slowly um, take small steps but really meaningful ones where our quality is still first and foremost and we're creating beautiful events um, and, and giving people a really memorable experience fantastic and you know for any Everybody who's starting out, Curtis, you know, people look up to you. You know, you're a celebrity chef. You've got a lot of TV appearances, and and can you tell me a little bit how you got to where you're at? And also for someone who is starting off, like, what are your recommendations? So let's start with like, what would you recommend for someone starting off? Look, I think you know you've got to find something that you really love. And I was lucky; I found something that I loved, and that was cooking. Um, and even more specifically than that. I love things that are a real challenge and I like competing. I'm a very competitive person by nature and I like to compete, which allows you to sort of drive for something, um, I think, you know, that's quite elevated, you know, so that's sort of what I loved. You asked me about fast casual, I'm like, no, I'm not interested <laughs> in it, but I'm really interested in fine dining, really, yeah. really interested in it. Yeah. Um, so that's just sort of, you know, I found my niche, okay. if, if you will. And I think that's important for people, because if you find the thing that really turns you on, that really, like, I used to wake up when I was 21 years old and I'd made a foie gras terrine the night before. And I would wake up and I would get dressed without taking a shower and I would run to the bus stop and I'd get to work. I'd wash my hands before I started working. <laughs> yes. But I, um, I, would, I would die to get in there and cut that slice of terrine and see how it turned out. And if you have that, that thing that drags you out of bed in the morning, I think that's really important. Okay. How the heck did you get to where you're at today? I'm talking about like getting the TV appearances. I believe you even had a traveling show at one point. And obviously you're at you know, Top Chef. Is it just really driven by the passion or what's more to that? Look, I think you need a bit of luck. That's the truth. I think, you know, there's, I know lots of people that have worked really hard all their careers and maybe haven't gotten that little piece of luck. So, you know, maybe, maybe I was in the right place at the right time here or there. Um, but I did work really hard and I really believed in what I did and, um, I saw something I wanted, so I went after it. You know, I saw a chef I wanted to go work for, I went and worked for him. And then the next step was the next step. And um, But that's, you know, I think with everything, you've, you've got to be a good person. You've got to be kind to others and um, hope for the best. Okay, great. Well, um, well again, that was um, a, a conversation I had with Mr. Curtis Stone. He's been a great guy. Really got some good insights about being in the catering space, even though he started so, like, only a couple of years or like right. not and he's already blown up and today we're going to get an 800 person meal so curtis thank you so much for nice your time you, really excited to ha connect with you and uh god bless and keep up the good work man thanks so much mate. You right. too. take it easy thank you